Hi everyone, it's Vicky Gordon Bloomfield here from Transport Evolved. I'm probably one of the worst days to film a review ever, but it's a review that needs to get done this week, so I'm recording it. I give you the plugless power wireless inductive charging system from Evertran. We've been putting it through its paces now for about seven months, and here finally is our final review. Now using the system itself is quite simple. You just pull into range of the charging station. It detects the plate on the underside of your car. And as you pull in, it guides you in with these series of arrows. Hopefully I'll get it right first time because sometimes you can get the placement a little bit off. And as you get closer, the arrows slow down and there you go. All there's left to do is just turn the car off and walk away and it will start charging automatically. Now, a lot of people have asked me how the plugless power wireless charging system from Evertran fits onto your car and if there are any modifications that need to be made. I'm gonna run you through some of the under hood modifications in a second, but suffice to say that this system costs about $2,800 for a Nissan Leaf fully installed. That's for the three kilowatt system. If you're going with a seven kilowatt system for say a Tesla Model S or BMW i3, it's a little bit more expensive. And Evertran have told me that it is actually working on newer next generation wireless charging for cars like the Nissan Leaf and Chevrolet Volt as well. The Chevrolet Volt, Nissan Leaf and Cadillac ELR were the first three cars that this particular system supported, but there are others that are on their way. Now, installation is really simple. First of all, you take it to an approved installer where they will install an under vehicle receiving pad, which handles communication back to the charging unit, but also um, receives the power from the pad that you place on the floor of your garage or parking space. Now, this, as you can see, is a temporary installation. That's because we've got it on review. But if we were to install this permanently, you can actually sync this cable into uh, a tube into the concrete of your garage floor. So the only thing that actually pokes up is the actual wireless transmitter pad. You can drive over it, you can drive over these cables. They're all really robust and sturdy. Now, as you'll see in this video, as you pull into the parking space, there's a series of arrows that direct you and help you make sure that your car is parked perfectly over the charging pad. The little numbers that you see in red LEDs tell you how accurate your parking is. If you can get 99, and I have done a couple of times, then you will have the maximum power transfer. If your parking is a little bit off and you get a lower number, then you will find that your charging is less efficient and it might take longer. Now, does this take up any installation space on the vehicle? Well, you bet. In the case of the Nissan Leaf though, um, plugless power have installed the under vehicle receiver unit, for want of a better expression, where there is actually a spare piece of space on the leaf. Now in the case of the leaf, there's an underbody panel that comes from the factory on the car that is replaced with the underbody wireless receiver plate for the wireless charging system. So you're not taking up any extra space. Yes, it does add a little bit of weight, but not very much at all. And um, it's compatible with all Nissan Leafs. Now, the only Leaf I can think of that actually has something in that space is the Australian market Nissan Leaf, which actually has a spare wheel under there. So if you've got a spare wheel or you've got a tow bar that you've added yourself, you might not be able to use this kit. But if you've got a stock Nissan Leaf, you can add one really simply and easily, or rather the approved installers, and they are all over the US, can install them for you. In terms of under hood changes to this vehicle, there really aren't that many. You will notice if you're familiar with the under hood area of a Nissan Leaf, there are a few extra cables hiding inside the vehicle's engine bay. However, they're not out of place and they are automotive grade, the same grade that Nissan uses in its vehicles from the factory. In terms of functionality with a standard charging station, you'll be pleased to know that the J1772 plug functionality remains the same as it would be for a stock electric vehicle, regardless of where your J1772 plug happens to be. So I guess it's time to give my verdict. For the last couple of months, this car has been our only source of transport. And so it's needed to be charging whenever we are not in it. And at home, it's become a wondrous joy to just pull into the charging space, 
get out of the car and the car automatically starts charging without having to think about cables. There's also no forgetting to charge because if you pull into the garage and you follow the guidance on that system and you get out the car and you don't have a charge timer activated, the car just does start charging on its own. There's no forgetting to plug in, which is probably the most useful if, like me, you work from home and you're in and out all day running errands. So for me, yes, it works. It's very useful. And if you think about the Tesla Model S version of this that Evertran are now offering for Model S and Model X owners, you could actually program your car to pull into the garage on its own and charge on its own. That's fully automated parking and fully automated charging, at which point this system makes total sense. Which brings me to my conclusion. As you may have guessed, I've got mixed feelings about this unit. Right now, in its current state, would I spend $2,800 on one of these for one of those? No. Because this is only a three kilowatt charging system, my car is capable of seven kilowatts. And frankly, not having to plug in every day is not worth nearly three grand, at least not for me. If I was using this in a fleet situation where I'm pulling in and out of the parking space all the time and I've got employees who perhaps are not very good about remembering to plug the car in, then it would start to make sense. There's also the efficiency issues of this unit. Now, Evertrans says that this unit is slightly less efficient than a plugged conductive charging system, and I would have to agree. In the summertime using this system, I noticed that the garage got noticeably warmer using this wall unit than my standard J1772 plug. In other words, the wireless inductive charging system was generating extra heat in the garage, probably increased the heat of the garage by a few degrees. Now, I'll admit I haven't measured that and I have no math to back this up, but plugless power, Evertrans says, a few percent less efficient than a standard plugging in charging system would have. And I think maybe that's in ideal situations. For me, I certainly noticed my electricity bill did go up by a few dollars every month and it was only a few dollars. Again, I like the using this unit because of my lifestyle, but I don't think I'd pay for it if I had to. Which brings me to my recommendation. Should you buy a wireless inductive charging system for your car? Well, that does depend on your lifestyle, but you should certainly try this system out because if you are the kind of person for whom a couple of grand is not a problem, you don't mind paying a few extra dollars per month in electricity costs, and you like the convenience of just pulling in and never having to worry about plugging in, then this is for you. If you have a Tesla Model S or Model X and you want your car to automatically pull into the garage and automatically start charging without you touching a thing, then this is for you. But if you're an average EV owner and you've got, say, an older Nissan Leaf, you want to use a three kilowatt system when your car is capable of seven, well, then it's not the unit for you. Does this mean that wireless inductive charging system is a waste of time? Absolutely not. This is a first generation unit. I'm really excited to see what plugless power and Evertran do next, because I think as time progresses, it's going to develop more applicable, more practical solutions for this technology that are more cost effective for everyone using economies of scale. And if in five or 10 years time, I have an electric car where the wireless inductive charging capabilities of a unit like this match the onboard charging capabilities of the car, and perhaps the car can offer some form of autonomy, then I want one. I'll write the check today. So, Tell me what you think. Do you want a wireless charging system for your car? Or do you think it's just a fancy schmancy waste of time for people who've got way too much money to burn? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And thanks for joining me today. I've got some more reviews that I'm gonna be lining up in the next couple of weeks. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. I hope that it's warmer weather where you are and keep evolving. <laughs>